Hello there, this is Chatterbox. Wait, is this thing on? Ah, it is. Hello there, this is Chatterbox, and I've been pretty busy, doing nothing. That is, until about a month ago, when I decided I wanted to stop going outside and start making games again. Some of you might remember that about three years ago, I released a game on Steam called Propulsion. It's a little speedrunning game where you use a rocket launcher to boost yourself to the finish line as quickly as possible. Three years later, and I'm still pretty proud of what I created. But I can't help but think that I could have done more, but I didn't. But recently, since I've got back into making games, I've decided to work on a three year anniversary update for it. I'm not sure why, since I didn't do an anniversary update for the first year, or the second, but it feels fitting. The game already has over 100 levels, but players told me that they finished the game in about an hour and they wish there was more content. Now, there is a simple solution to this, which is make more levels manually, but that doesn't sound needlessly complicated, so of course it isn't what I did. Loads of games that I love have awesome level editors, and there are some games I'd love even more if there was a way to make custom content for them. I also feel like user generated content is perfect for a game like mine with small, fast paced levels. Three years ago, I don't think I was a good enough developer to be able to create a good level editor, but I think that nowadays, I'm probably good enough to create a reasonably functional one. So I brushed the dust off my Unity project and opened it up for the first time in a while. After a little look around in the code to get to grips with everything again, I was not very happy. As much as present me has no idea what they're doing, past me definitely didn't, and the game's code showed that. There were some questionable decisions in there. I didn't know how long creating this level editor was going to take, and I didn't want to be trudging through spaghetti code for the entire time, so I made the wise decision of going through every file and rewriting a lot of the code. By doing this, I was also able to find and squash a load of bugs. I thought about some of these bugs since the game launched, and I really couldn't figure out how to fix them, but with one look, with fresh eyes, I was instantly able to sort them out. So, now with cleaner code and a lot of initial issues ironed out, I was able to start work designing my level editor. I basically just wanted it to be similar to Unity, because it's a pretty decently designed piece of software that's quite easy to pick up. My top priority while designing this was to make sure it was easy to use. I want anyone to be able to hop in and quickly make a level, so I'd have to account for that. I'm not really a fan of spending a lot of time designing things, personally. I'd much rather give something a go and then iterate on a real working design. So, that's what I did. The first thing I did was create a small menu that allows the user to drag and drop items into the scene. This was a bit trickier than it sounds as I needed to find a way to reference all the objects I wanted the user to access. To do that, I created a few scriptable objects to store everything in categories and also to reference my Unity prefabs to make up the items I want the user to add to the level. I have about 400 different items that users can place in their levels and it would be a pain referencing them all in scriptable objects manually. So I also created some editor scripts to populate them for me because I'm lazy. This probably took longer than doing it manually, but it was really satisfying when it worked. I wrote a little bit of code to make these appear in some UI on the side, and then made a script to allow the user to drag and drop them, raycasting into the scene to determine where the items actually pop up. Now I had items in my level, I needed a way to manipulate them. Basically every 3D program ever uses a little transform gizmo, so that's what I decided to add. Conveniently, Unity has a built-in one and allows you to use them in your projects. But inconveniently, the Unity built-in one only works in the Unity editor, meaning I'd have to use another one if I wanted it to actually work in my game. Writing one myself would mean doing loads of boring maths, so I found a free one online and used that. It didn't really have any features, but all the hard work actually transforming the objects was done for me, so I just adapted it. I wrote some code to change the appearance of it to be more 3D and to make it match the style of the game, and I also added a few extra features like snapping. From there, I added a bit of UI to allow the user to set up a few settings and buttons to save or play their project. The saving was really easy to implement, as Unity has functions for serialising and deserializing game objects to JSON. I can then write that JSON to the disk to save it, and read it back in and deserialize it to reload the scene exactly as it was. This meant that for a user to play a level, all I needed to do was load up the JSON and my level would be perfectly reconstructed. This was, until I sent it to a friend to test, where it didn't work at all. This really confused me because there was no reason I could think of for it to be like that. I spent a while debugging and realised the issue actually came from me saving a level item's original prefab inside my save data. When Unity stores a reference to a prefab, it uses something called the instance ID, which is regenerated every time you reload the game or the editor. This means I was storing a reference that just didn't exist on my friend's computer. I changed to just storing the name of the prefab, and I was almost done with the level editor already. Now, it's about time I introduce you to something called the 80-20 rule, which you might already be familiar with. It's a common saying, where 80% of the work takes 20% of the total time, and honestly, in this project it was more like the 80-10 rule, because the rest of this project took a while to implement. 
It was safe to say that the user experience this editor was not great. There was no copy or paste, and you could barely tell what was going on, not to mention all the bugs. For instance, it was clear that my level editor was young, because it hadn't developed object permanence yet. I spent a little while fixing some of the obvious bugs, and then got back to adding features. I added two panels which are similar to Unity's hierarchy and inspector views, allowing the user to see and select every object in their scene, and then modify their properties precisely. I then added a few hotkeys to make using the editor easier, such as allowing the user to zoom to the selected object, and to copy and paste things. I realised it was quite easy for the user to accidentally modify something they didn't want to, and there was no way to revert that change, which could lead to a few incidents. So I added a system to undo and redo various actions. The system is really simple, it just stores the state of an object before it performs an action, and then adds that previous state to a list, allowing me to go back in time and revert the action. One of my favourite things that I added to the level editor is that when you save a level, it will automatically create a preview image for it, which I do by grabbing a picture of the screen and then cropping and resizing it. I then store the image as a string so I can put it in the level file. With all of this done, I was now pretty happy with the actual experience of using the level editor, but I hadn't put any work into anything around the level editor. One of my least favourite things to program is UI, and there was no UI to actually play or edit levels from the menu, so I spent a few slow hours hooking everything up to make it so users could actually do stuff. This was cool, the users could locally create and play their own levels, but I'm not sure people only want to play their own levels, that's a bit boring. I needed a way for people to be able to share their levels. Thankfully, my game's hosted by Steam, and the guys at Valve have already thought about this. There's a section on every Steam game called The Workshop, which is where the community can share user-generated content. I just need to figure out how to interact with it. Thankfully, there's an API to interact with the Steam client, which I was able to use previously to link my game up to Steam's achievement system. An issue with writing a lot of code to interact with Steam is that there isn't a lot of examples online, and the documentation is sometimes pretty unhelpful, making it pretty hard to get started with. Another issue with the Steam API is that it's written in C++, so you need a wrapper like Steamworks.net to interface with it if using C Sharp like me. I made a start to allow the user to upload their maps to the workshop, but I made this stupid decision to use a deprecated workshop API, because there was actually some resources online for interacting with it. This was fine, until I wanted to upload a preview image string that I store inside my level files, and I got slightly stuck. I couldn't really figure out what was going wrong internally to cause it to fail, and at this point, I realised it was pretty stupid to have used the deprecated API, and switched over to using the new one, because I'd kind of got the hang of how everything worked at this point. Working with the Steam API was a big mindset shift coming from the typical thought process of game programming, because it relies on waiting and using callbacks a lot, which I don't normally do a lot of. After a lot of little tweaks though, I was able to upload maps to the workshop. Downloading them again was much easier, because a lot of that is handled by the actual Steam client. All I needed to do was to read all the files in the directory it downloads them to. With that done, users could now download and play community-made levels, which was pretty awesome. There are a lot of really boring bugs to fix at this stage, so I spent a little while tidying everything up, before sending it off to my friends to test. So, uh, what do you think about it? It was completely broken. Ah. As you can see, it didn't exactly go as I'd planned, and I had to fix a lot more bugs. I also got some great feedback on what to improve, such as actually allowing the user to update a level they'd made which I'm not sure how I forgot in the first place. But after that, everything worked reasonably well, and it was time to see what people were making with my level editor. Oh, well, uh, moving on. I now have a functional level editor for the community of my game to make maps for, and I've put the game on a pretty big sale, so if you want to try it out, then now's probably the time to get it. I'm really excited to see what people make. This update's definitely made me a lot happier with the end product of the game, even if it did take three years to add. If you've liked this video, I'd love if you liked it, and maybe subscribe too because I might work on some more projects soon. Have a good day!